G'day, if you're here to find out what the F1 drivers drove on the road to the Japanese Grand Prix, you've come to the right place. We had Aston Martins, Toyotas, Hondas, Ferraris. The Japanese Grand Prix takes place at the Suzuka circuit. It's a mighty track, but it's set in a pretty rural sort of town. Quality accommodation, not too much of it. So most of the drivers stay at the circuit hotel. Now that means the drive in is all of about 600 meters. Takes them a few minutes in traffic and yes, they could walk, but as we've uh, agreed before, that would be uh, a crazy move because they wouldn't get very far very quickly because the fans would be all over them. And the fans do line the route into the circuit, both just outside the gate and all the way through the main fan zone, which is on the right. Who should we start with? The Ferrari drivers? Yes, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc, both driving SF90s. Can you rent one of these in Japan? Well, it's pretty tricky. I did find this particular site though. They allow you to rent one for around US $1,200 for seven hours, but that's in Tokyo. In the US, this car sells for around $400,000. The price of this car in Singapore, I'm guessing would be two to four times that. It's such a small country, uh, obviously not a great deal of roads, and car parks are at a premium. Next up, Nico Hulkenberg. He was in a Toyota Raze. Now, I have not heard of this car. Did a little bit of research. It's a compact SUV from the Japanese automotive giant. And small cars here are very popular. What I do see a lot of in this country are these square tissue box style cars, small and boxy. Why? One of the reasons is there's not much parking. So if you do have a garage, chances are it's quite small. So trying to fit a Land Cruiser is probably not gonna work for a lot of people. And where did Nico get his car from? Well, like a lot of the F1 drivers, they use F42 Travel. This is a company that provides VIP ground transport service. As they say, it's a stress-free solution to car hire logistics for large-scale sporting events around the world. I've used F42 Travel and it's phenomenal. You just roll up, pick up your keys from one of their staff and go. There's no standing in queues. There's no having to fill out any forms. That's all been done prior to you collecting your car. So it's a seamless service and they handle all damage claims and invoicing. This sort of service is long overdue. If you're running an event that's going to need a lot of cars, you should contact F42 Travel. No job is too big or too small. What about Kevin Magnuson? Well, he was driving the exact same car as his teammate, Nico, a Toyota Raze, and both cars were delivered to the hotels of the drivers so they didn't have to pick them up at an airport or a train station, an even better deal. Next up, Lando Norris, and he took uh, the Shinkansen from Tokyo to Nagoya, and if you've never done that, you want to do it. It's a spectacular way to travel. And what car was he driving? Was it a spectacular McLaren? No, I'm afraid not. It was a very modest $21,000 Toyota Harrier. Yeah, Harrier, I like the jump jets, but this one stays firmly on the ground. This car is only sold in Japan, Singapore, and Malaysia. What sort of money will you pay for car rentals in Japan? A subcompact, a tissue box car effectively, about 33 US dollars. Compact car, $40. A mid-size car, probably 60. 100 for a full-size car and 125 for a van. Oscar Piastri was driving the exact same car, although a different color. And after the race, both of those drivers who finished on the podium took the Shinkansen together. Oscar actually left pretty quickly after Singapore to go to Tokyo. He had some promotional duties to carry out there before the start of the Japanese GP. These guys are on pretty tight schedules and everything is planned out for them pretty much to the minute. In fact, I'd recently did a video called A Day in the Life of an F1 Driver uh, so that you can understand just how hectic their lives are. Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso both wound up in Aston Martin DBXs. Next up here, Gasly and Esteban Ocon driving the exact same car, a Toyota Crown. Now, for those of you who have been to Japan, you'll know that the Toyota Crown is the predominant model of car used for Japanese taxis. Although the cars that they were driving at this race look nothing like the taxi version. Those crowns are based off a 1995 model called the Toyota Crown Comfort, and production of that model finished in 2018, which I think is a shame. I love these bonnet-mounted side mirrors. And there are a couple of quirky things you'll notice when you get into one of these taxis. One, the seats are often covered with this white lace and embroidery. It's the darndest thing. Oh, and two more things. Uh, the driver opens and closes your door. Typically, they have a little handle in the front seat that allows them to open your door, and they don't allow you to get out on the driver's side. 
only the passenger. And I also believe that uh, these cars are used as taxis in Hong Kong. Alex Albon was also driving one of these Toyota Crowns. He would uh, arrive each day with his trainer Patrick Harding from Ireland and his teammate Logan Sargent was in a RAV4. Handy little car off-road. If you're a Logan Sargent fan, you want to get one of these signed prints which you can pick up at kimilman.com. Each one hand-signed and numbered. I stayed at a hotel in Scirocco, which is about a 30-minute bus trip in from the track. It's only about six kilometres, and every day we'd pass the Honda factory. So were any drivers driving Hondas? Yes, four of them. And it was the Honda Civic Type R, the racing version of this car. Now, these are exclusively manufactured in Japan. And did you know that Suzuka is actually the Honda testing track? It's pretty handy, that manufacturing facility that we pass. And uh, was the head of Honda at the track on the weekend? Yes, he was. He was uh, a guest of Red Bull and he was down on the grid prior to the start of the race. You're looking at him right now. Now, I imagine many of you would not know what side of the road they drive on in Japan. Do you know? I do. Same side as Australia and the UK, that is the left-hand side of the road. Lots of people ask me how can I meet a driver and typically I put that information uh, on my race by race guides at kimilman.com. But uh, I can tell you that at this race, you probably not, well, yeah, you could meet one. It was probably only one that stopped for autographs every day just outside the swipe gates, and that was Yuki Tsunoda. But otherwise, you can queue up out the front there and know that most of the drivers will at least give you a wave as you come past, and they're most enthusiastic, the fans. Oh, and some of the drivers too, as you can see here. Nothing out of the ordinary to report about the Alfa Romeo drivers with Zhou Guan Yu in a green Tonale. And what's the promo blurb about this car? A design that combines Alfa Romeo's stylistic features reinterpreted in the name of modernity and functionality, conveys sensuality and athleticism in the car's body. Bit of marketing bullshit there. Teammate Valtteri Bottas was on a bicycle again. I'm not sure whether he goes for a long ride prior to coming to the track or whether he just uses it for that short 600 meter journey. But I can tell you that he loves Japanese beef. And I have a video coming out very shortly about that and you will want to view it. My wife's just got home, that's the garage door down there. What was she driving? An FJ Cruiser. Turn it off, there we go. Next up, Lewis Hamilton in a beautiful Mercedes S580. These start around $125,000 in the US and he was one of just a few drivers to be dropped off and collected right next to the swipe gates. Very little walking involved from the Mercedes Great. Yes, thanks, you're on my video. That's a turtle. Now, there weren't too many fans outside the swipe gates for most of the evenings, although on Saturday there were probably 40 or 50 in a very neat line. And the funny thing is, too, with the, with the Japanese, they're very polite. Out on pit lane on Thursday for the public pit lane walk, they didn't need huge big fences, which they would typically use at other races. All they had was these plastic cones and little plastic tubes to keep the fans back. They're so polite and compliant. But on Sunday night, they put all those people behind a fence up around the outside of about turn five or six. So to drive a rental car in Japan, do you just need your standard license? You do need your driver's license, but you also need an international license. And if you're traveling to this country for the first time, or some others that have that requirement, make sure you are prepared. And just before you go and watch another one of my videos, have a look at this photo here. This is a, a Birkin bag from Hermes. Big deal, you say? Well, these bags sell from anywhere from eight and a half thousand to over three hundred thousand dollars. This is pretty much the gold standard when it comes to handbags. This woman had one in the paddock, and she had Christian Horner, Alex Albon and Sebastian Vettel sign it. I use this in my handbags of the paddock post and just about every comment on the post was about this particular bag. So I would guess that somebody has significantly increased the value of their very, very expensive handbag by getting those three signatures. There's just one thing left for you to do before you go and watch another one of my videos and that is to please subscribe. I don't know how many of you haven't subscribed. I'm guessing it's about 50%, which is ludicrous. So now's your chance to do that and like the video. And for my digital images, merchandise, signed prints, and a whole lot more, check out these sites here. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. We've just come from the Singapore GP. Uh, they have the... Shut up.